cool it down. The Samsung Galaxy J3 is one of the worst smartphones ever created, and I don't mean that lightly at all. If you had the misfortune of coming into adolescence between the years of 2015 to 2018, you probably got your first phone and it probably looked something like this. We were coming out of the era where a child's first phone would be something like a flip phone or a keyboard phone. Instead, I got something really fancy, a smartphone. But well, yes, it was a Samsung smartphone. This phone caused me excruciating pain for the next four years of my existence. The main reason for that is because this phone is on godly levels of slow. Okay, so quick unscripted story time. One time I was getting a call from my mom and I said, okay, the phone's vibrating. Let me pick it up and answer the call. Guess what the phone did? It didn't answer the call, that's for sure. The phone completely locked up and froze and I ended up missing the call three times. I mean, imagine being so bad at your job that you can't perform your primary function. I mean, if you're doing anything other than just like scrolling around the UI, which is a thing that most phones should do smoothly, I think, it locks up basically immediately and won't let go. And at first, I thought this was because of the massive amount of files I have stored on this phone and the years worth of cache and updates and bloat I probably installed on this phone. But no, this phone is factory reset for this video and I thought it improved the speed, but no, not really. It's basically as slow as it was as I remember it. However, the specifications of this phone might help explain some of its absolutely atrocious performance. Inside is a Snapdragon 425 processor combined with 1.5GB of RAM and the slowest 16GB of eMMC storage you can find. Apparently there was an Exynos version of this phone and it was a bit faster, but like, I wouldn't really be holding my breath. And if you want to really put into context how slow this phone is, you might remember the video about the iPhone 4S I did. And that's a pretty gosh darn slow phone. But it released in 2011, so you can kind of forgive some of that speed difference. But this phone came out in 2017. I ran a benchmark, and it is slower than an iPhone 4S by a significant margin. But if you can believe it, this isn't even the worst version of the J3. The original one from 2016 had a speed trum something in it, and it's even slower. In fact, I actually owned one of those. It was actually my first phone. It was a 2016 variant. But I ended up breaking that phone, I kid you not, four times before I got this one. And I never ended up fully breaking this, so I kind of just kept using it. And we've already established that this phone is a complete piece of garbage, but if you can believe it, I think the 2016 version was a better phone overall. I mean, for one, it had an AMOLED screen as opposed to the LCD on this one. But that's also the reason why the 2016 one wasn't so durable. I kept breaking it. I'd drop it with the case on, not even from that high, and the AMOLED screen would just shatter. The glass usually was just fine. Additionally, the 2016 version had an 8 megapixel front shooter camera, while this thing has a 5 megapixel unit, which is worse than most of the front facing cameras these days. I don't really know why they felt the need to like change the design to the most boring, ugliest plastic thing in the universe. Like, the 2016 one looked fine, it used their older design language, but it looked okay at least. It's also kind of funny how features of this phone have become nostalgic, like you take off the back of the phone and you have your battery and SD card slot right there. It's not just like permanently glued in. This is also the last generation of phones to consistently come with headphone jacks and the micro USB port. God, I hate micro USB, it's so, it's so stupid. It uses USB 2.0, and the storage on this thing is already so slow that getting files on and off this thing is like a disaster. The battery life is okay actually, it's not incredible, but it will get you through an entire day. And Plus, you can literally swap them out. I think I have like four batteries sitting around here somewhere. Also, I kind of just completely glanced over the cameras, but we probably should talk about them. It's 5 megapixels on the rear and 2 megapixels on the front, which is actually better than some of the low-end competition was offering back then. But now I want to present amazing mountain views ruined by the camera of the Samsung Galaxy J3. Enjoy.
Okay, yeah, that makes me like infinitely grateful that even most low-end phones these days have half-decent cameras. I mean, seriously, I was in some of the most beautiful locations I've ever been in my entire life, only for this thing to pump out oil paintings of them every single time. I was so fed up with the camera quality on the Galaxy J3 that when I upgraded in 2020, I basically chose a Google Pixel 4a out of spite. But like, at the end of the day, this was supposed to be my first phone, and I don't think my parents would have appreciated me breaking an $800 device three times. However, I still can't help but be extremely grateful that phones these days aren't built like absolute garbage with bottom of the barrel components. I mean, the Pixel 4a, when this came out for the price of $350, was one of the best deals on the planet. And I mean, for the price of this thing when it was new, which is about $200, you can find something incredibly good for that price. I mean, for about 200 bucks today, you can get a Samsung Galaxy S10 or a Galaxy A53, and both of them rivaled this phone in every way possible. And yes, I know, if you go on eBay right now, you can find J3s for like 20 bucks a piece, but for the love of God, they're not even worth that. These things are basically e-waste at this point. I mean, just try and find something better for a little bit more money. That's going to be worth it in the end. <laughs> but alas, it doesn't change the fact that I unfortunately own one. And while this phone is definitely getting up there in the age range a bit, it's not actually completely obsolete. It runs Android Oreo 8.1, which isn't completely unsupported yet. In fact, most of the latest apps still work. And if I was some kind of masochist, I could probably get away with using this today. <laughs> but hey, since the app support is there, I want to end this video with a few games that I used to play on this phone back then, just to demonstrate what I would use this phone for. So yeah, as you can see, that wasn't too great. But then again, this phone isn't a flagship. It was a phone meant to get my foot in the door of the smartphone world. And to be fair, it did that job admirably. This phone has consistently gotten me out of emergencies that I wouldn't have been able to do otherwise, and is part of the reason why my early channel was so successful. So the Samsung Galaxy J3 is basically just a footnote of my teen years, and I'll probably feel nostalgia for it in the next decade. But with that, this has been the Samsung Galaxy J3, one of the worst smartphones ever created. And this is Calc G, out.